Hi, welcome to Pursuitary. Uh, we're going to be uh, dealing with motors and Arduino today. Um, Fabrice Florin, also known as Dr. Fabio, is going to, to lead this geek out. And why don't we all uh, introduce ourselves? I'm Howard. I think you all know me. I do these geek outs. Anthony, why don't we start on, on at your, your, your end there? Okay, sure. Uh, so I'm Anthony Alvarez, and this is. This is Oscar, and we're in St. Louis, Missouri, and we just started back getting into Arduinos again, and um, just heard about Pursuitery. I don't know, maybe a week ago, and uh, saw this was happening, and. Excited to see what it how it works. Okay, great. It's very as you can see, it's kind of informal and uh, it's about peer learning. So uh, we're we're learning from each other, and today we're going to be learning from Fabrice. Fabrice, you're sort of next in line there. Why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Fabrice, and um, uh, during the daytime I work um, at the Wikimedia Foundation, and uh, we run the uh, servers and the software. The uh, and uh, during the weekends, I um, play with Howard and our friends at the Pataphysical Studios, and we build crazy art. And I'll show you a little bit of that in a moment. I'll I'll share what I've learned. Jill, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Jill. I'm from New York, and uh, very new at all of this, uh, but I'm teaching it to some kids, so I have to learn it myself. <laughs> That's the best way to learn. Okay. Uh, congratulations on getting the last project working. Um, oh, thank you. Um, actually, I have to thank the Fairfield County Makers Guild. The guy sat down with me for several hours going over every sliver of code before we found out it was the soldering. Aha. Uh -huh. so. <laughs> So yeah, it helps to uh, get a get a magnifying glass to look at those when you're soldering those pins because they're awfully close together, and you want to make sure that that none of them are bridged. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to mute you when you're not talking, Jill. So when you talk, uh, and also uh, you too, Anthony, be sure to unmute yourself. You can do that okay. by going to the top of the screen. Justin. Yeah. Hi there. I, I don't my I'm not my camera's not working right now, but my name is Justin and I have a lot to learn about Arduino. I've only done a few little pursuitary projects making link link uh, lights blink. So I look forward to making things move. Woo. In my real life I, I uh, have a web page called links.net where I write about my life and publish videos. All right. Welcome Justin. Thank so you. I'm gonna mute I'm gonna mute you as well when you want to talk Unmute yourself. Thank you. This is this is so we don't have a bunch of background noise that, that is distracting. And I'm going to mute myself as well. And uh, Dr. Fabio, take it away. All right, guys. So I'm pretty new to Arduino. Um, Howard and I started this little pataphysical studio thing <clears throat> three years ago, and uh, we sort of thought, well, maybe we might use a little interactivity for some of the art that we're creating. So on a lark, I got an Arduino at the Maker's Fair. And then uh, I've been hooked ever since. You know, it's, a, it's been really fascinating to be able to make uh, little objects that are interactive. So today, I'm going to share with you a, um, uh, a slide. And so I guess I'll turn screen sharing on if it's all right with you. Um, and show you these slides, and then um, what we're going to do is um, talk a little bit about the project that got me uh, interested in motors, and um, then we're going to uh, take a look at how we can, um, you know, add a motor to our Arduino project. So it's about making things move, and um, I'm not sure what the why uh, Google is not letting me make that thing go away. But anyway, so uh, what I'm building now is a Balinese cuckoo clock. And um, that's uh, going to be a small uh, object that uh, 
will, um, when you open the door on uh, one of our pataphysical slot machine cabinets, um, you will see a little bird that will uh, fly in to greet you. Um, he will flap his wings, he'll shake his head, and he'll tweet words of wisdom. It'll go. It'll be a little gamelan music. It'll go cuckoo, cuckoo, and then they'll talk to you in Balinese and tell you all sorts of things you should know. And then he'll fly back in his temple. So um, w the way this is going to work um, is um, basically there's a. If you look at the outside, there's going to be a little statue uh, with you know heads, eyes, beaks, and all that. And these things are going to be animated. Uh, and they're going to work with motors. So that's the next slide. Um, you can see that the little motors inside or attached to the body, as well as LEDs, are going to make things move. Specifically, um, there's one motor that's going to move the head, left and right, and I'm going to show you how to do that, how to sweep the head. And then there's going to be a couple motors for each wing so he can flap his wings and shake his head. Um, this is what the art's going to look like. Uh, I have collaborated with a Balinese artist who created the actual art. But while he was doing the art, I was busy doing the technology with my Arduino. And then uh, now we're going to marry the two together. So to show you how the technology works, um, in, we're going to take a look at uh, two short videos. Um, so let me get off the slides. And let me get to Vimeo, and I'll share the links for all that. Um, and actually, I, uh, let me actually share the uh, the link to the slide when we get started on the script. So here's Vimeo, and the first one I want to show you is Garuda Awakens. Can you guys see it? Okay. Can you guys hear me? Let me check that everybody can hear me. Can you can you actually hear me? I can hear you. Hey, Freddie, how's it going? But I can't hear Howard because he's still muted. But it sounds like... Oh, I'm no. here. Oh, okay. Howard's crowning himself. <laughs> I like I'm that, not... Dr. Really. Do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, hi. I'm Dr. Really. I'm uh, Dr. Fabio's parole officer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I watched him build his Garuda and motor <laughs> control, and he's absolutely fabulous. He knows exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's very really cool. All right, I'm gonna go and show you the video now. If it's all right with you, can you guys see the video? Yeah, I can see it. I'm gonna go ahead and mute our, mute us again. I see it. All right, I'm gonna play. It's only 34 seconds. Um, okay. It basically shows you what the prototype is doing now by making him shake his head and flap his wings. Balinese cuckoo clock is alive and well. The eagle god Garuda flaps his wings, shakes his head, and is ready to greet you with a few tweets of wisdom. Coming soon to a wonder box near you. It's alive. All right, so that's the first video. So you can see what we're doing here. Was we're using three motors, one for the head, two for the wings. Uh, now I'm going to go back and show you one more thing that we're doing that's also a short video. Um, and that one is going to show you how we make Garuda move forward and backward. I didn't put the Garuda there, but we're using a measuring tape to make that happen. Here we go. So here is the Balinese cuckoo clock. It has a new mechanism that will be pushing this Garuda up and down, forward and back, uh, as he flaps his wings. And it's made of a tape measure that we adapted for this purpose. And if you look at the back of it, uh, it essentially has a motor that spins the uh, inner wheel of a standard tape measure in order to provide a telescoping effect that can propel the little Garuda forward or backward, as you wish. There it is, Garuda. <laughs> You'll be moving forward and backward thanks to a modified tape measure using pataphysical energy. <laughs> All right, so now, now you've seen what the basic vision is. 
we're going to get back to the slides and we're going to start getting serious about uh, making things move. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to use a little motor like this. Uh, let me first share this information. Does everybody have, do you have your Arduino servo, um, I mean your Arduino um, application open like this? Uh, because uh, in a moment I'm going to ask you to do this. But, but before we do this, I'm going to switch the camera over to uh, show you how to attach um, a motor. Um, so let me switch to this camera here, which uh, Howard was kind enough to loan me. And this camera is going to allow you to see if all goes well. Um, you should be able to see. Oh, interesting. It's not switching. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. Save. Hmm, that's interesting. There's, oh, maybe I need to stop screen sharing. Okay, so I'm stopping screen share. Yeah, you got to stop screen yeah. sharing, then switch, and then click on save. All right. Now we see it. Okay, great. So what we're looking at here is, um, and I got to get used to this. I'm not used to working with these little cameras. But you're basically looking at your Arduino, and then here um, is a little motor. Now, does everybody have a little motor? Um, it's it's a servo motor. Did you guys procure one? Does anybody not have a motor? Uh, if you don't have a motor, you can just watch and then do it later. But essentially, a servo, and I'm going to turn this thing on so you can see how it works. Can you guys see the motor okay? Yeah, here we go. So. Uh, what it's doing now is it's basically sweeping back and forth uh, to the left and to the right. Now, you know, uh, Anthony, who's already built the robot, probably knows all about this, so it's not going to be a surprise for him. But for we actually just used a motor, just a uh, and not a servo. Oh. So it just would only go forward or backwards. Well, there are three so kinds of motors. Uh, there are servos, but there's also stepper motors and gear motors. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, gear motor will just spin very fast, uh, forward or backward. The step motor will just spin one step at a time, but you cannot control exactly where it goes. The servo motor is able to go back and forth 180 degrees, and you can very precisely control where it goes. You can just say, I want you at 72 degrees, or I want you at 45 degrees, and it goes where it's told. Um, so I'm using servos because they have a, that, that much precision. But if I was doing a car like you guys are doing, uh, Anthony, I probably would use a gear motor instead. And all those guys can be controlled if you have like a ether shield. This is a um, motor party ether shield. Uh, it's, if you're really interested in motors, it's worth acquiring that. And Howard has shared a link with you. Um, I believe it's um, 20 bucks or so, and if you want all the motors and all the parts, it's like 40 bucks for the full kit. Um, it's not a bad way to learn what these three different motors do. But most of the uh, basic applications can be done with a servo. So today, we're going to learn how to attach a servo to your Arduino. So I'm going to show you how I did this here. I basically took the end of the Arduino pin, and let me know if you can see okay, but I can let me bring it a little bit closer here so you can see better. And again, forgive me, I'm new at this. Um, but you, you can see that the end of uh, every, every um, servo has a um, basically a three pin uh, attachment. I don't know if you can see it well enough here. Um, but essentially, it's it's got three three uh, wires here: a black wire, a uh, red wire, and a white wire in this particular case. But uh, depending on the unit that you have, you know, it may be different. But usually, the darkest one is always ground, and the red one is always power. That's so you'll put that to five volt, and then whatever the last one is, that's the one that's going to go to pin nine in this particular case. I need your eyes. So. What you should do is do what I did with this guy. I don't know if it's clear enough in this particular scenario. Let me see a little bit. I need the light going to 5 volts, the 
black to go in the... You guys see what I'm doing here? Sorry, I didn't realize I was um, muted. No, no, I can hear you. I can hear you, um, you know. So, if you could just take uh, some jumper cables, I assume you probably have some jumper cables in your Arduino kit. And a jumper cable is basically, you know, it's just a, a cable with two pins, uh, one on each end. And so I'm going to show you what that looks like. So here's the, uh, the red pin um, of my jumper cable, and it's attached to a 5 volt on my Arduino. So I'm putting it in the center, that's where it goes. And then the, um, I'm using a blue cable for ground, but I could use any color, really. And that's the one that connects with a darker a cable right now that's like a brownish cable and so I put that to the ground so let's take a look at what that looks like can you guys see this I'm not sure if you can I'm sure if I'm, I need to learn how to get better at these devices so here you might be able to see that you see the there's a 5 volt which is red and so I, I put it into the 5 volt pin of my Arduino and then the black, which you know is blue in my case, is going to the ground. So this is what the Udo looks like. You know, the, it basically has the power and the ground right here. Hold on, I gotta get better this stuff. Not sure why I'm, normally I'm pretty good with cameras, but in this case I'm still learning. Forgive me. It's okay. We can see it. All right. So, um, so the ground on the ground the red on the 5 volt and then you have one more cable one more um, pin and that we're gonna put that on pin 9 you can see on this side of the Arduino there's uh, all sorts of different um, a whole row of pins excuse me yeah why pin 9 well because I'm gonna give you a script that has pin 9 in it now you could of course put in pin 8 and then go change all the numbers in the script but um, to make it easy for you, um, I recommend you put it on pin 9 now, and then later you can just move everything around. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. All right. Um, and, yeah, you have basically from 1 to 13. Those are all the little pins. You can put LEDs. You can put uh, all sorts of things. You know, I'm, uh, someday I'll figure out how to make this camera work properly. Um, but in any case, uh, as long as you can see enough, that's what counts. So, um, how many of you have completed that task, doing uh, three jumper um, uh, wires and connected them to five volt ground and pin nine? Um, we're done here. You're done here. Okay. All right. So, um, fire up your Arduino IDE, and the excitement is going to come here. So, I'm going to switch back to um, screen sharing. And um, there we go, entire screen, share. We're going to go to the slides, and I'm going to share the slides with you. So check your little chat here. And uh, right here, I see Justin Nepal just got working. There's a link now at the bottom of your chat window. If you click on it, it should open a presentation, which is a you know, Google slide deck. And in that presentation are all the slides that I've shown you, but uh, you're going to be taken directly to an ugly slide called Arduino Server Servo Script. Can you see it? Yep. How about uh, other folks? Are you able to? Uh, yeah, I see. There's a bunch of folks here. So that must be you. Hello, 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 hello. Lots of animals. And uh, now you see this uh, in small font. This uh, script. Just do a command A to select everything. Um, so you select the entire screen, then command C to copy it if you have a Mac. Basically, you want to copy that whole thing. And now you want to go and put it in your Arduino and paste it in to your Arduino. Um, and um, in a moment, we'll, we'll talk about what the script does. Uh, but if all goes well, you should be able to just click. Uh, after you upload the entire script, starting with sweep your servo at the top all the way down to uh, something about delays. Oh, and I gave you all the LED stuff. That wasn't really necessary. But anyway. Excuse me, Dr. Fabio. Yeah? 
Where did you get the uh, Arduino code from? Um, I borrowed it from the servo library. It's almost essentially the servo library, uh, but I may have done a thing or two to monkey with it. Um, I don't think I monkeyed a lot with it, though, so if you want to, I can actually give you a link to the servo library. But I'm, I'm looking that up myself. What's that? I'm looking that up myself, so I'll put that into the. I'll put that into the. Oh, good. Chat. I think it would be helpful for people who haven't done this to know where to look in the Arduino yeah. uh, menu to look yeah. for them. Absolutely. Um, so I just put, I just put that in the chat. Well, cool. Um, I mean, all you have to do is Google Arduino Servo Library. Um, and I don't know if you want me to talk about the script and what it does, but maybe we should first see Yeah, it. just quickly tell yeah. us, run through. Okay. Um, so um, the first thing that you should notice here is, uh, can you see okay um, when I highlight something? There's uh, something called include servo h. That's the first line of code. And that what that does is it calls the servo library, which is built into Arduino. And it says, please include that library. Then we uh, basically uh, want to uh, give a name to our servo, uh, which is going to be in pin 9. And so we're going to say servo, which invokes the library, my servo. That's the name. And you can do up to eight servo objects with that library. Then we're going to uh, do a little integer. Um, and this is going to be uh, position, POS, uh, POS for short. And we're going to put zero in that integer. It's a variable to store the servo position. And then, oh, you don't need to worry about the LED. I should have taken that out. But we're going to say uh, integer LED is 13. I, I just have a so little. You're making, you're making an LED blink and the servo move at the same time. That's correct. And I should have taken the LED stuff out, but I always have an LED thing to make sure that it's working. And that's OK. So there's just one LED here? Yep, it's uh, it's built into all um, to all Arduino, so it should blink on your uh, Arduino by itself. But you could you could connect a an LED to ground and one of the pins, like pin thirteen. Yep, correct, correct. And so if you want to put a fancy LED, you can do this. I mean, basically, this script allows you to insert all sorts of other things if you want to. So now we're going to the next important routine, which is called void setup. Almost every Arduino sketch has that. This is uh, when you set up everything before you're going to start you know, running the loop. So in this case, I'm going to attach the servo. So basically, my servo dot attach. Remember, we named it my servo. And then we're going to attach it to pin 9, because that's where we have it. And then in the next line, we're going to initialize the digital pin. That's for the LED. You technically don't need this for the motor. Sorry for keeping that in. But it's handy if you want to run an LED. OK. And then next, we're going to go to the next major routine that almost all Arduino sketches have is a loop, something that keeps looping. So here, we're going to use within the loop, we're going to use a for loop. It's going to start when uh, position is 0. And it's going to go all the way up until position is 180. And every time, it's going to increment uh, the variable position by 1. So if you were at 0, it's going to add 1. Then the next time it loops, if it's at 1, it's going to take you to 2, all the way up to 180, as long as it's smaller than 180. So what it will do is um, it will do my servo ride position. So let's say your position is 1. It will tell the servo to go to position 1, which is 1 degrees towards 180 degrees. And um, then we have another for loop after that. Uh, if position is 180, then reverse the process. We're going to basically you know, take it all the way back down from 180 back to 0. So well, this is how we What's that the delay 15 about? Oh, it's just to uh, make sure that we give enough time for the server to do what it's supposed to do. OK, and that's, that's actually 15 thousandth of a second. Yeah, those are milliseconds. Um, so it's, it's a good habit because you know, the servo is kind of slow, and you don't want to give it so many instructions it doesn't know what to do. And then the rest of the code, you could just comment it out. I'm sorry, I, I should have taken it out. But it's uh, you know about the LED making it blink. Can I ask a question about the uh, the delay? What? Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering. Uh, 
is it also there? Is that a way that you could control the speed with which it goes back and forth? Yeah, you could potentially do that. You could slow it down. We should. We could try it if you want. Okay. Well, I wasn't sure if did you experiment with different delays to to make it go the speed you want, or is it just sort of preset um, in the servo? Yeah, sometimes I'll experiment with that, but I haven't really spent a lot of time on that. Mostly right now, I'm trying to get all my motors to work because I got six different motors, you know, for two okay. for the wings, one for the head, and then one for going forward and backward, and then I need two more for the doors to open and close. Right. And then, in, this, in, in your loop, um, how would you make it delay by 15 um, milliseconds in between each position? So you're incrementing it from one till two and two to three, but you're not you're not specifying a delay in that increment, right? Well, I think that you know we could play with that. Let's try. Let's try it. I'm gonna do this right now. I'm gonna delay it uh, 150 in both ways, and then I'm gonna upload it and see what happens. Okay. So this is how you do it. You just now you upload it, and um, it, you can see it's compiling, right? Okay. And now what is it doing? Oh, it's going really slow. Take a look at it. Can you see it? So it's going. Uh, no, really we're just uh, we're seeing your we're seeing your screen, not your camera. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, my my apologies. So yeah, it's it, it totally worked. Thank you for asking that question. You just taught me something. Oh, great. Okay, uh, so that's pretty easy. Yeah, that's really easy. And then I encourage everybody to. Uh, so now I'm in screen share. Is that what I wanted to do? No, no. Uh, I'm not on screen share. I want to. Uh, be we're not seeing. We're seeing the board, but we weren't seeing the motor in that shot. Oh, okay. You're, so you're seeing the board. Well, yeah, I see. Okay. See that? See how slow it's moving? Oh yeah. Remember how fast it was moving before? So yeah, it totally yeah. works. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah. So I'm. I'm thinking something might be interesting from a visual perspective is the video you show. I think the head and the wings kind of go at the same speed. It might be interesting if. If they, maybe the wings went a little faster than the head, or if you had a varying speeds of the different ones, I think it might feel a little more lively. Totally, be... totally. I, I I I totally agree with you. Yeah. And you know, actually, cool. I, ideally, what I want to be able to do, and I'll show you with my own head because that's probably the best way to do it, is uh, I want it to go like this, this, you know, so like, you know, it's surprising. You know, he's like looking left and right and. You know, yeah. and then the wings might go like that, and then nothing, and then it makes. <laughs> yeah. So I want to add some randomness, you know. But right now I'm still busy just getting all the pieces together. Right. Yeah, you could definitely have it randomized in the code. Yeah. Too, or look randomized. Yeah. But actually have a pattern. But that's yeah. Cool. I'm so, getting an error when I upload. Oh really? What's the error? The error is um, A V R D U D E uh, S T K five hundred get a sync not in sync um, R E S P equals zero times zero zero. Can you screen share it? It'll be easier for me to see what the problem uh, might be. Sure. Yeah. Let's the screen share. You go to the left, and there's a little green arrow. Then you just turn it on. And then select original screen so we can see your whole screen unless there's things you don't want us to see. Am I what? No, because then they would see. Okay, so now we can see. Oh, it. Here's Jill. Thank you, Jill. Thanks. Okay. Void set a binary sketch size 27 level 3T maximum. Overdued. Hmm. That's a new one. I've never experienced that before. Um. And I see you've commented out all the LED. That was smart. Uh, but you kept the thing. Go back to the top again. Yeah. Yeah, so you're, you're good on that. Um, can you open your, uh, at the top, Let you know, all the way at the top of your screen, there should be a, um, a menu that lets you select, um, you know, the serial port and the... Uh, Jill, this was the issue that you had last time as well with getting the serial. Yeah, first the board. Yeah, it's, on, it's in the tools menu. So you got to yeah. make sure that you've got the right board. 
Um, so if you have an Arduino Uno, you should select Arduino Uno. So if you have Arduino Due Milanove, you use that instead. Here, yeah. I'll, turn, I'll turn screen sharing on. Um, but we had this problem before. She's got a Windows machine. Oh, yeah. yeah. It worked on the Windows machine. We were able to uh, get the MP3 working um, on this machine. So how did I you get the, How did you get that port to switch from COM4 to COM3? Oh, um, if I switch the USB port, that will change it. So I think that, that I think that's what it's saying there. I'm not sure. Yeah, the um, if you I don't know if you can see my screen, but um, in the tools menu, there's two settings: one for the board, uh, which okay. I think I'm showing now, and this is where you select your Arduino, whether it's yeah. Uno, Duel, uh, By the way, Freddie, for you it's uh, Due Milanove, right? Um, and then the serial port, ideally you want to get not the Bluetooth stuff unless you're on Bluetooth, but use uh, one of the uh, other modems at the bottom. And I don't yeah. know if the menu is the same as mine, but that I always make that mistake. I always forget about that. Uh, Dr. Fabio, I think the names of the ports are different on Windows. and oh, okay. She's getting COM4, and it's supposed to be something like COM3. Oh, uh, switch around depending on which USB port I have it plugged into. Oh, uh, yeah. So, um, so play with it. Spread it onto the one that it reads as COM4. Yeah, one of those should do the trick. Uh, let's hear for some of the other folks. Did anybody uh, successfully uh, get the motor to move on their end? Yes, yeah. my, yes I'm wiggling. I'm wiggling. <laughs> He's wiggling. I'm wiggling. <laughs> what about you other guys? Doctor, really? Are you wiggling, or are you? Um, oh, I, yes, I'm. 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 I'm wiggling. I, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm vibrating. You know, I always say that theatrical solutions are much better than technological solutions. Yes, they are. No doubt. But you, you mentioned uh, I'm not using uh, Duo Duo uh, I'm using Uno. You use Duo Duo Lube. If you're using the Avellino. that's correct. Now with Uno, just Jill, how are you doing? Are you still getting that error message? I'm gonna try and Your sound is your sound is breaking up, and we can't understand what you're saying. Okay. Um. Yeah, you only have one. I'm, I'm trying to recompile everything to see if it works in a different. Oh. Uh, okay, we're see, we're seeing your your uh, IDE now. It says it's compiling. Oh wow! It's so it, okay, so you you're be, done. It did it. Okay, so is your is your motor moving? Um, my motor is moving. Hey, All right. All right. It's happening. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Com4 did it. Let's hear it for mm -hmm. Com4. Hmm. I know we've had trouble before with, for whatever reason, either the board or the Com that choice gets changed. And then we bang our heads a lot. And So that's a good place to know to look. Yeah. Pick that serial port. So, what about you, uh, Anthony? Were you able to? Um... We're we're just playing. We don't have the servo actually, so we're we're going to be spectating and. Okay. Learning. We just have the motor, so we're just going to learn from you and and next time we get a servo, <laughs> we'll be all set. Wait, what is a servo? What is a servo? Doctor Fabio, you want to explain what a servo is? Sure, sure. So a servo is a um, is it's a kind of motor. Um, it's a kind of motor that you can control very precisely, um, and you can make it rotate from zero to one hundred and eighty degrees, pretty much like you saw. But it cannot spin very fast. You can't you can't like run a car with it. You know, like I mean, um, you know, it only goes from zero to one hundred and eighty degrees and back, but it's very precise. Um, yeah. 
Okay. But you know, uh, an interesting thing to know about servos is that a servo is really made of a gear motor. But it's a gear mo motor that's been kind of like hacked and only go a uh, very uh, limited way, but very precisely. Okay, but so it's basically like a motor doesn't have as much power as like a motor that could actually spin a wheel? Um, it, it has as much power as something that spins a wheel, but it, it cannot do like multiple rotations. It can't just spin, you know, at 3,000 rounds uh, per minute. It has just as much power, though, but it is limited in its motion. However, in most robotics cases, you don't need a ton of motion. Um, you just, you know, you can get away with just having 180 degree with great precision. But there's another kind of motor called the stepper motor um, that, let me see if I have it. So, Oscar, this one just spins in one direction. Like um, this. And you have to make or, it. or this direction. The servo goes back and forth. But a servo yeah. goes to specific spots that you can tell it, just go to here and stop. Mm -hmm. Or just go to here. Um, now, so, how, Howard, you have a kit, right? Uh, you have a I servo. do. Can you like show it to us so we can see what a different motor looks like? Okay. So... This here is a uh, a bigger gear motor that looks just like the one Anthony is is, is that, showing. Yeah. So this is a geared a geared mm. stepper. Mm. So I I could use a I could use that geared stepper for a robot wheel. Um. And we've got a, another kind here, a standard servo. This is like a bigger servo. Wow. Pretty big, huh? This is all in the Adafruit uh, package. Hmm. And then here's a little... This is a DC toy motor. I think that's what we have. Oh, we have one of them. Oh, we have two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I'm showing you uh, some of your motors right here. Um, Dr. Fabio, can you explain what a, a, a motor shield is, is for? Why would we want to use a motor shield? All right, so here's the motor shield. I've just basically added it in on top of my... Uh, Arduino, so you know, like all motor shields, you can just you know, you know pop them on top. And so, what this uh, motor shield has is first, it has two plugs for uh, servos, nine and ten in this case. So, if I want to, I can uh, plug in that servo that we were just looking at and just put it in here. And here it is doing its thing, you know, but it's really easy to plug in, I don't have to do the jumper cables. But then the other thing is I can, if I want to, take a little gear motor like this one. And uh, I, I don't have it connected now, but I could just put its left and right wires here. And it'll make it spin very fast to the left, spin very fast to the right. And I can use this little, um, hold on, I'm not showing you the right thing. I can use this little guy. Oh, man. You know what, I have it upside down. That's why I'm so confused. Um, but, yeah, this is where I would basically put two wires for this uh, for this gear motor, which is one that spins very fast, and then here um, at, at the other end of my uh, motor shield uh, is where I would connect my stepper motor. So this one here would be the stepper motor that would connect right here. So you would use a shield if you wanted to control multiple motors. That's right. So here I can control one stepper motor. Uh, two hobby motors or gear motors here, and then two servos. And it reduces a lot of the jitterness that you might get with some of those guys. Uh, and it allows you to play with these different things if you want to. And then you've got room on the board to do all sorts of little hacks if you want to. Um, but eventually, you're going to graduate beyond that. It's not really necessary. So, for example, if you look at my prototype box here um, that I'm doing for the Arduino, 
what I'm doing here is uh, here's the uh, the tape that you saw in the video. It's going back and forth. Um, and I don't know if this is a uh, if you can see what's going on. It's got a it's got a false floor that this little guy is going to go on top of. And and you want to see what I'm you know how I'm doing uh, the little Garuda. Here's the back of the Garuda. Remember you saw the front. Um, he lost his head um, this weekend, so I don't have the head, but I have the the wings which move. And if you look at the back, you can see that I basically have these three motors going back and forth and then essentially what I did is uh, put a little rubber band and I, I used um, a safety pin that I glued to the uh, wing and then I have these little um, what should we call it I don't know if, it, if you guys can see but you know the, these little guys move back and forth they're, they're just like this guy here but um, they make the wings you know go forward and back and then the rubber brings them back um, but the reason I wanted to show you all this is that, so he's got, you know, this uh, this Garuda has got like three little uh, attachments that basically go through the hole in the back, um, and and he goes forward and backwards, uh, and he's still attached in the back, so all these things can happen. And the back looks like this. I don't know if this is helpful to you, but uh, I'll show you briefly. So I've got a little. Um, Let's get it up there. Um, so this is a uh, you know the the wide shot shows you the you know the, the whole box, right? Am I wide enough? Yeah, I'm pretty wide. So that's an Arduino with a shield on it. Yeah. So now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You can see uh, below the uh, you know you, you saw the masking tape. I'm not sure if it's upside down or not, but in any case, um, and then up here is an Arduino, Arduino Uno. And I've got, uh, you know, all these, I ended up doing a special perf board, you know, to keep track of all those guys. And so instead of using an ether shield, I just made my own perf board. So I've got like, you know, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight servos all back to back. Um, and so they're easy to, you know, put in and put out. Um, and then when you have a lot of servos, your Arduino can't handle it anymore. So you need to give it a, a different source of power. So I've got one source of power for the Arduino itself, and the second source of power for all these eight motors. Um, and also, the motors can be a little bit dirty. They can spike, and they can mess with the Arduino and confuse it. So it's usually a good idea to put your motors, if you have a bunch of them, for sure, on a separate line. And for our purposes, we're going to use 12 volts for the motors. Uh, instead of five volt for the Arduino, so um, I, I, what what I could do is just give you a quick little overview of the pataphysical slot machine, if it's helpful to you. Well, let me go back and put screen sharing back on. Um, Fab, and, it would be very cool to see the back part with the wings running when it's on. If you if you can show us that without damaging it or anything. Um, gosh, I can. Sh oh. Let's see. Can I do that? Um, no, I, that's the parts that I have not. Yeah, I'm not fully set up, unfortunately, for that. Okay, no problem. Uh, yeah. Thanks for checking. Yeah. Um, I should have been, but you know, once Garuda lost it's his head, I was just like a infinite yeah. sadness. You know, I just couldn't. I'm still recovering. Um, all right. So, pataphysical. Um, so what I wanted to show you is a couple more links here. Oh, I have them in the slides. Stand by. So if you go back to these slides that we were just looking at, past the script, I I gave you a whole bunch of links that are pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm going to take you to the schematic slides. So what this does is this is a uh, a slide deck that shows you all the schematics that we have for the pataphysical slot machine. And uh, later on, when you have a minute, you may want to take a look at the slot machine. There's a video that tells you all about it. But uh, the reason I wanted to show this to you is to give you a sense of the thing that we're building. So we're basically building this little, uh, these cabinets of curiosity that contain different works of art. And each work of art is a little bit different. And some of them have light, some of them have sound, some of them have motors. 
and they're all connected to each other through a bus that has six wires. So basically all of the boxes have either an Arduino, or if not an Arduino, at least a connection to this. And you can see how all the boxes are, they all have numbers, and eventually they'll be able to talk to each other. Uh, and here's a schematic of what the main bus looks like. So um, you can see we've got uh, black is ground, and red is power 5 volt, that's for the Arduinos. And then orange is power 12 volts, that's for the motors. And if your motor doesn't want 12 volt, you can put a regulator you know, to bring it down a bit. And then we're reserving three wires for communications between the boxes using the I2C protocol. So green is going to be the clock, uh, blue is going to be the data, and then there's a purple box for interrupt if they're all yakking at the same time. We wanted to have a way to say, shut up, I'm talking, listen to me. Um, and then every box, like the box that I have, connects to this bus in order to get its ground and power and all that. And then it connects like the ground and the five volts go to the Arduino or Diavolino artwork controller. And then there's some uh, LEDs, there's a sensor switch, there's a motor servo if you want one. The, the servo will go to the orange line rather than the red line so it doesn't dirty up the power. And then there might be a sound chip. So all these schematics are pretty interesting. This is a schematic for the iFlower. And uh, you'll be able to see it on the video. And so that one has a door switch that goes into the Arduino. Uh, it has some lights uh, that also go in the Arduino. The ceiling lights at the top do not need that. And it has a wave shield that goes into the Arduino. So each of our exhibits has a slightly different um, schematic. So here's a schematic for the cuckoo clock that you were just looking at. So it's going to have a door switch that will turn the power on or off. It's going to have some lights in the temple itself that will be connected to the Arduino itself so we can make them animate. Gonna have a bunch of motors that'll go through I decided I didn't need the servo shield, but I got my own shield now. Um because I needed so many of them. Um and then uh, again we'll probably add a wave shield for the audio or something like that. So maybe it'll be an MP3 card. Um so uh, all of these are little Google presentation. You can uh, I'll share the link with you. You can kind of copy them if you want to. Um, to, and you can make your own schematic. It's worth it to do a schematic because it helps you figure out what the hell you're doing. So you don't get, you're not trying to design and build at the same time. So I find it worth it to spend an hour or two figuring out what I want to do first and making sure that, you know, I've got all my little amps and, and watts, you know, and, and volts figured out. Uh, so this is the next one we're going to do is we're going to make the helmets, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, the LED lights will animate, and uh, it might even control an air blower, or it might control a vibrator, and things like that. Um, and this is uh, ergonomics for looking at, uh, you know, how our various diff various users, um, what their position is with respect to the helmet, so we can kind of figure out, you know, how to do it. Everybody's different, so that poses an additional challenge. We're gonna have to make sure it works for everybody. Anyway. Dr. Fabio, you are a master documenter. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, well, I, it it helps me uh, remain sane. So I will share this in the Google chat as well, so you have it. I believe it's so, all. Yeah, anyone with a link can use that. Uh, so, any um, uh, Jill um, and uh, Anthony, uh, what would you like to see happening in future geekouts? Um, I'm really interested in learning about all of this. I love seeing the possibilities of what we can do, and, you know, anything I can learn about it is great. What about uh, wearables? You interested in uh, doing uh, some wearables where you do a little sewing of components? I would be very, very interested in wearables. What about you, Anthony? Yeah, I, it's almost anything, <laughs> it's pretty big, but uh, okay, I'm looking so at... Okay, you're, so you're most subscribed to me on Pursuitery, right? Yeah. Um, I don't you know. Well, Have I think we, I need to follow you. Do you get notices when I create a geek out? No. Um, I will go in and subscribe to you. 
Okay, go to pursuit. Go to pursuitery and um, and sign up for the for notices on Arduino and follow me. And when I create a geek out, then you'll get a notice about it. And so I'll create a, a geek out for a couple of weeks from now, where we'll do some um, uh, sewing of circuits. I'm I'm going to use the uh, the kits from Spark Fun, but I'll put the parts on there that you can order. Uh, to do that. Oh, very cool, Doctor. Really? You've got a, I you've hate got to interrupt, a but I think Justin's doc. video working now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Hey, Justin. Good to see you. Yes. Up. Uh, and your duck. Yeah. Thanks for getting my duck rotating. <laughs> all right. Oh, is it rotating? Oh, how cool! Yeah, is that? and that's the setup. Oh, I love it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that's very cool. <laughs> all right. Uh, it's a success story. Yeah. Exactly. Do Dr. Fabio, what would be the next step with motors? Um, well, I gotta choreograph all the motors together. So no, I mean for 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 us who are learning motors, who have just started today, what would be oh, the next thing? Well, I would recommend you do something like what Justin just did: is attach it to you know a work of art or you know some some you know create a little creature that can do something. And create a, some kind of a you know of an effect, or, or create some kind of a useful function. You know, uh, maybe uh, you could create a cocktail mixer, that will mix your drink for you, um, or you know whatever you know whatever you want to do. But just you know build an application with uh, one or more motors. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Fabio. This has been the the, the best geek out ever. Oh, cool. certainly, certainly the best uh, uh, documented. <laughs> okay. Well, really happy to. Really happy that I could be of service, and uh, look forward to doing more in the future as we learn more together. And Anthony and Jill, make sure that you get your notices on Pursuit Arena. I'll create a uh, a geek out for uh, doing some uh, some some wearable stuff, and I'll give you enough time to order the parts. Okay, wonderful. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned this in my last email to you, uh, but the kids I've got, I've got a budget of ten dollars per kid. Per week uh, to do anything I want with them. Oh right. So yeah, I mean the wearable really budget is going to be pretty inexpensive. Okay. Um, it may be more than ten dollars. Uh, maybe more like twenty, but uh, I'll 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 make it as inexpensive as I can. Okay, you know, and if it's something I can do over a couple of weeks, I can do twenty dollars for two weeks, thirty dollars for three. So, All right, great. Okay, I I will keep that in mind. So, yeah. um, I, I, out of curiosity, did you guys learn something useful today? This has really been useful. Um, yeah. Um, Dude, I have a rotating deck duck on my desk. This was super <laughs> useful. Yeah, I'm, I'm I've got just got to think about what kind of uh, art object to put this in now that I know how to do it. You have yeah. to show the rotating duck to Dr. Kennard, Dr. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, you know, um, I think that this particular type of um, uh, pyrogogy, as um, Howard uh, calls it, seems like a very promising way of uh, helping people learn from each other. I sense that there's a really great potential with this kind of exchange we just had today. And I'm looking forward to doing more like that so I can learn more about how we can learn together. All right. Yes, peer uh, learning is what the, what Pursuitery is about. Well, thank okay. you for hosting this, Howard. Really appreciate it. It was a fun and experience. It's a free platform. Uh, you, anyone can create a geek out if you want. Um, so it's, it's free because it's uh, sponsored by the MacArthur Foundation. So the idea is to enable people to... Uh, do peer learning with a friend. So well, I think that the doctor really should teach us how to do little clown things and halos on top of our Google Hangout. Maybe that could yeah. be a topic. <laughs> Next time. 